Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation. This time we are going to talk about DCR current sensing, which is a useful technique to measure the current circulating through an inductor by using the DC series resistance of the inductor itself. So in this presentation we will see an introduction, then we will see the time response of the DCR current sensing, we will also see the frequency response of this circuit, we will make some additional considerations for the design of this type of circuits and finally we will see some examples of application. In power electronics applications it is very common to have the necessity of measuring the current circulating through an inductor. For example, we are showing here a DC-DC back converter with a synchronous rectifier in which we are interested in measuring the current circulating through the inductor. This can be used for implementing different uh, control techniques like average control, current mode control, but also for implementing protections, current shading in the case of multi-phase converters and so on. So one of the first possibilities is to use a series resistance, external series resistance with the inductor. We are showing here the typical implementation and this uh, picture here shows a typical uh, series resistance for these applications. So using a series resistance has uh, several advantages. It is accurate, it is also very easy to implement, but the main problem is that we are going to have losses extra losses in this series resistance so we are decreasing the efficiency of our converter and also in some cases the the cost of this series resistance can be high so we are also increasing the final cost of our converter so the idea of DCR current sensing is to use the internal series resistance of our inductor here in order to do the measurement of the inductor, inductor current. So for this we use these two elements and external series resistance but with a high value here and a series capacitor here. So this network is in parallel with our inductor and we are measuring the uh, voltage across this capacitor to generate the voltage sensing that is going to be proportional to the current circulating through the inductor. We will see uh, this in a moment. So the DCR current sensing has several advantages, as we can see, the losses are going to be lower uh, compared with the external uh, series resistance because we, we don't have any extra element. Also the cost is going to be lower because we are using simple components. We can uh, obtain lower volume and higher power density by using this and avoiding the use of an external series resistance. The main problems are that this technique is going to be less accurate compared with the external resistance because of the specific operation of the RC network and that it is going also to be a little bit more complex to design because we need to adjust the operation of the RC network in all the different conditions. The basic analysis of this um, uh, measurement technique is very easy to do. Uh, we are showing here how to do it by using the Laplace domain in which we are obtaining the sensing voltage here, the voltage across the external capacitor. So we can do all the analysis and finally obtain here the response of the output voltage over the inductor current. So it is going to be like this, is equal to the DCR resistance of the inductor multiplied by this transfer function in which we have a zero and a pole. The zero is given by the time constant of the uh, circuit given by the inductance and the DCR series resistance L over RL 
and the pole is given by the time constant of the RC network, so it is equal to R times C. So we can see that in this transfer function, if we design our time constant tau c equal to the time constant tau l, then the response of our circuit is going to be equal to the DCR resistance of the inductor. So we have this linear relationship between the output voltage Vs and the inductor current. To evaluate how good is our circuit in measuring the current circulating through the inductor, we can do a time analysis by injecting a step-up transient in the current circulating through the inductor. For example, here from 0 to a given level i. So we can obtain this step response by applying the transfer function to the uh, expression of the step-up transient and by obtaining the inverse transform of this expression here we can get finally this expression here showing the voltage across the capacitor, the sensing voltage in time. So we can analyze this response for different values of the time constants. Of course, if both time constants are equal, tau L equal to tau C, then we will have the perfect response reproducing the step-up transient in the current. However, if the time constant tau L is lower than the time constant tau C, then we are going to have a response like this, in which the voltage starts with a lower value and then it is going to have a transition up to the steady state value, which is given by the DCR resistance times the uh, injected current. In the other case, if the time constant tau L is higher than tau C, then we are going to start from a given point here with a higher value compared with the steady state value, and then the voltage Vs is decreasing until reaching the steady state value. So the conclusion here is that we need to keep both time constants as equal as possible in order to better reproduce the changes in the inductor current. Let's see now a um, quick design example that we are going to use also in the rest of the presentation. Let's say that we have an inductor of 10 microhenries with a DCR resistance of 10 milliohms. Then the time constant tau L is equal to 1 millisecond. So we have to design the time constant tau C equal to RC and equal to 1 millisecond. So if we set, for example, the capacitance equal to 100 nanofarads, then the value of the resistance will be 10 kilo ohms. In the design, we have to take into account that very high values of the resistance must be avoided because the current would be too small and then this would be more sensitive to noise. So low values of the resistance help in reducing the error and the noise. Now we are going to do a quick simulation with this example to check the time response. We are using here our inductor with uh, different values that we are selecting here in this um, step analysis for, uh, to, for three different values, 8 microhenries, 10 microhenries and 12 microhenries. The nominal value is 10 microhenries and the serial resistance is 10 milliohms. Note that here now it's important to use the internal resistance of the model in order to implement the serial resistance of the inductor. This is why here uh, we are using this parameter here RL equal to 10 milliohms. And also, this is the parameter corresponding to the inductance. 
So as we have designed the value of the capacitance is one is 100 nanofarads and the value of the resistance is 10 kilo ohms and the perfect matching will be obtained for an inductance value of 10 microhenries. So if we run the simulation now and measure the output voltage, we can see here the output voltage for the three different values of the inductance. In blue, we have the value corresponding to uh, 10 microhenries, so the response of the output voltage is the perfect response. Uh, reaching immediately the value of 200 millivolts, which corresponds to this uh, value of the current, 20 amperes, times the DCR resistance, which, which is 10 milliohms, so it's 200 millivolts. For the value of the inductance of 8 microhenries, now we have that the time constant tau L is lower than tau C. So we have this response here starting from 160 millivolts. And for the other case in which the inductance is equal to 12 microhenries, in this case we have a higher value of the time constant tau L compared with tau C. So in this case we are starting with this uh, higher value to 140 millivolts and then going to reaching the steady state value of 200 millivolts. Let's see another simulation now for a real power converter. In this case, in this back converter with synchronous rectification. To get more information about this converter, you can take a look at this video, Power Electronics number 14, synchronous rectification. And in this case, we are supplying this um, converter with 12 volts and generating an uh, output voltage of around 5, five volts with a um, nominal current of 20 ampere. And we are using here our RC circuit to measure the current through the inductor. The driving of the switches is, the, is um, done by using this driver, my driver for hull bridges that you can get from my website. And here I am using just for comparison, comparison I am um, generating here two voltages. One is proportional to the current through the inductor and the other one is the output voltage here across the capacitor but uh, divided by the uh, uh, series DCR resistance. So in a perfect matching situation these two voltages should be equal. So in this first simulation we are using here an inductor of 10 microhenries so it is uh, it corresponds to the perfect matching. So let's see how is the uh, result. So I'm going to run the simulation now and we can see, for example, here the output voltage. So we are reaching a value around 5 volts, but this is not important right now. Let's see here the current. So we can see the uh, current circulating through the inductor, a typical triangular waveform. And now here is the voltage that we are getting in our sensor. So we can see that because we are in the perfect situation, both voltages are equal. So this means that we are measuring perfectly well the current through the inductor. But imagine that now we decrease the value of the inductance and say that we are going to use here 8 microhenries and run the simulation again. Now we can see that we have some difference in the results. 
Now the uh, time constant tau l is lower than tau c, so we can see something similar as in the case of the DC response that we have just seen. The average value goes below the um, real value of the uh, inductor current. And in the other situation, if we increase in the uh, we increase in the inductance to 12 microhenries and run the simulation again. So in this case, we can see that because the time constant tau l is higher than tau c, then we are having the other response in which we start with higher values of the uh, current, so the average current is higher initially and then it is going to be similar in a steady state. It's also important to analyze the response of our sensing circuit in the frequency domain. This is important to evaluate the similarity of our sensing voltage and the current through the inductor. So we have seen before that we have this uh, frequency response of the output voltage versus the current through the inductor. And then we are going to have again three different cases. The perfect matching corresponds to the case in which both time constants are equal. In this case, both um, the zero and the pole have the same frequency. And then we have this flat response of the gain of our sensor, which can be obtained like this, 20 times the logarithm of the DCR resistance. If the time constant tau L is lower than tau C, then we have that the pole is at a frequency lower than the zero. And therefore, at high frequencies, we are going to have a lower gain than the um, ideal value. In the other situation, if we have a um, time constant tau L higher than tau C, then the frequency of the zero is lower than the frequency of the pole, and then we will have a higher gain at higher frequencies. So in both of these situations, we are going to have a different waveform at the output voltage compared with the ideal waveform obtained uh, from the inductor current. Let's investigate this a little bit further by doing a quick simulation again with our circuit. Now we have the perfect value of the inductance equal to 10 microhenries, and then we are going to run the simulation. Uh, so we are going to measure here the current through the inductor and then the voltage corresponding to our sensing voltage, and we can see the perfect matching. With the time analysis, we investigated the dynamic response uh, at the beginning. And then now, with the frequency analysis, we can check the difference between these two um, uh, voltages, between the sensing voltage at the, and the voltage proportional to the inductor current in steady state operation. So if we take a look here in this part in a steady state, we can see that the sensing voltage in blue is exactly the same as the voltage proportional to the inductor current. However, if we now, for example, decrease the value of the inductance to 8 microhenries and run the simulation again, then now if we go to steady state again, we can see that the sensing voltage is lower in amplitude than the voltage corresponding to the inductor current. This is because now the time constant of the inductor tau L is lower than tau C and therefore we are um, we are, um, or we have a um, gain in our circuit which is lower than the ideal value. In the other case, if we increase the value to 12 microhenries 
and run the simulation again. In this case, we are going to see that the sensing voltage is or has an amplitude slightly higher than the uh, voltage corresponding to the uh, inductor current. Okay, in this case, this is because we have a um, time constant tau L higher than tau C, and the gain at high frequency is higher. So with this, we have seen the importance of keeping the value of both time constants equal. So we have to consider the possible changes in our circuit. In the inductor itself, we are having two sources of error. One is the change in the inductance due to manufacturing tolerance, which is typically plus minus 20%. So we are going to have a range of the inductance between a minimum and a maximum value. The other effect is the operating temperature on the DCR resistance. So we can evaluate the change in the DCR resistance by using this equation here, where T is the operating temperature, RL0 is the value of the DCR resistance at a temperature T0. And alpha sub c is the temperature coefficient of the copper which has this value shown here. So when the temperature changes we are going to have this range also for the series resistance of the inductor between a minimum value and a maximum value. So we have to consider these changes here. So at the end we will have that the time constant tau L is going to be in between a minimum value given by the minimum value of the inductance divided, divided sorry, by the maximum value of the DCR resistance and a maximum value of the time constant given by the maximum value of the inductance divided by the minimum value of the DCR resistance. So with this we can evaluate the behavior of our circuit in the different situations. Note that once we have designed the values of the, uh, our RC network R and C, then the sensor is going to behave by following this expression here that we have just seen. Another very important point in this technique is the effect of the inductor saturation in our measurement. We know that if we approach the saturation of the inductor, we are going to have a behavior like this. When we reach the saturation knee of the VHQ for a given value of the current, and then we increase the current, then we are going to have a decrease of the inductance. So in this case, what is going to happen is that because of this decrease of the inductance, the time constant tau L is going also to decrease and very quickly, and it is going to be lower than the time constant of our RC circuit. So we are going to be in a situation like this, in which even we are getting low values in our sensing voltage, much lower values than the real values of the current. So the conclusion is that with this technique is not possible to detect the saturation of the inductor. And in order to avoid using other uh, circuits to detect uh, possible overcurrents in this situation. Usually in these applications what is recommended is to use soft saturation materials like iron powder. So in this case we are not going to have an abrupt change in the inductance of our inductor and it is going to change slowly with the increasing of the current.
Let's take a quick look at this by doing a simulation with our converter. In this case, we have decreased the value of the inductance from the nominal value of 10 microhenries to 3 microhenries. So if we run the simulation and check the two values, the real um, voltage proportional to the inductor current would be like this in green and if we measure the sensing voltage it would be this uh, voltage here in blue so we can see that the voltage is much lower than the real voltage uh, that we should have so our sensing circuit cannot detect this uh, very high peaks of the inductor current due to this effect of a quick decrease of the inductance due to saturation. Let's see now how to generate a voltage proportional to the inductor current by using some extra circuitry. Here we are presenting a possible circuit in which we are measuring the value uh, of the voltage across the capacitor. We are using two operational amplifier to measure the voltages at each node of the capacitor but assuring that we are not interfering with the circuit. So here this operational amplifier has a very high input impedance and they are generating here the corresponding values of the voltages. And now in this part here we are using a um, differential amplifier implemented with um, another operational amplifier. Note that in order to reproduce well the waveform of the current at the output we need to check the uh, frequency response of the operational amplifiers. In this case, for this operational amplifier, because in here we have a um, higher gain than in these other cases, we are using an operational amplifier with a um, higher bandwidth. Here is 4 MHz. But we can see that in these other operational amplifiers, because they are just operating as voltage followers and with a gain of 1, then we can use uh, low-cost operational amplifiers with 1 MHz bandwidth. Note that the three operational amplifiers have been implemented by using this element here, my operational amplifier my op-amp that you can obtain from my website. So let's see now the simulation results. I'm going to run here and then we can see the voltage here proportional to the current through the inductor and here we can see our output voltage in our sensor of course uh, very much lower because the gain is one volt equal to 20 amperes but we can compare it by multiplying here by 20 and we can see that they are matching quite well um, both in, in um, steady state and also in the transient response but imagine that we select here an operational amplifier with only one megahertz of bandwidth and run the simulation again then we can see some difference and it is not going to be so well reproduced the, um, the, the current through the inductor by our sensor. So it is important to uh, take into account the bandwidth of these operational amplifiers. Finally, let's see an application of using this uh, current sensing technique implemented in our back converter with synchronous rectification and using a current program control, current mode control, in which we are measuring the output voltage, sending the output voltage to this error compensator, in which we are comparing uh, the output voltage with a reference value. 
And then with this uh, comparator, we are uh, comparing the error coming from the error compensator with the uh, current circulating through the inductor and generating the reset signal of this SR flip-flop. Also, the set signal of the flip-flop is uh, activated from a um, pulse uh, signal with a given frequency, which we have selected to be 100 kHz. And finally, this is going to generate the PWN signal for the switches. So now we can run the simulation and see the results. Let's see, for example, the output voltage. Now that we have implemented here a soft start uh, circuit in order to increase the uh, voltage reference slowly up to 5 volts. So we can see that now we have reached steady state operation with an output voltage of 5 volts. We can see other waveforms, for example, adding another pane and we can see in the output of our sensing circuit with the information corresponding to the current through the inductor. We can show also the output of our error amplifier. Here we can do a zoom like this so we can see better the comparison. And then we can see also here and the output corresponding to the PWN signal of the switch. So we are showing here how when the current reaches the output of the error amplifier, the switch is turned off and then the switch is turned on again when uh, the flip-flop gets a uh, pulse from the uh, from this voltage source that is generating the clock for the set signal. So in principle we can see that everything is operating well. Let's do a change here and maybe see what happens if we decrease, for example, the value of the inductance down to 8 microhenries and run the simulation again. So we measure again the output voltage. We are obtaining um, a slightly lower value of 4.97, but in principle it is operating quite well. But of course we are going to have some difference between the current circulating through the inductor and the output corresponding to our sensing circuit. Well, this is all today in this presentation. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that it is useful for you. Please let me know if you have any comment or question and see you in the next video. Goodbye now.